गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरी वन आई थिंक दिस इज़ अ वेरी टाइमली कॉन्फ्रेंस एंड दैट्स वाई आई हैव टेकन आउट टाइम टू कम इन बी विद यू फॉर अ शॉर्ट पीरियड वी आर इन एन ऑरेंज अलर्ट राइट नाउ आई मीन वॉट कुड बी अ बेटर सेटिंग दैन दैट राइट द स्टेट हैज़ एन ऑरेंज अलर्ट फॉर दिस होल वीक टिल द एट ऑफ जुलाई नॉर्मली इन जुलाई वी हैव वेरी हैवी मानसून इन महाराष्ट्र एंड इट यूजली स्टार्ट ऑन द फर्स्ट एंड इट लास्ट फॉर अ कपल ऑफ डेज सो I know that the purpose of this conference is to encourage CSR, and I very firmly believe that that is the way to go forward, and that's why I'm here to lend support to this cause. And why I, do I feel strongly about CSR support is because many of the developed countries in the world have been able to achieve some modicum of understanding of how to deal uh, scientifically with the events that are happening around them is through collaboration. And this is what I'm going to show you in my slide. Just two, three slides. I'm not going to take too much of your time. But I hope to be able to make a strong pitch for why this is important. So I would like to take this 5C approach, as you can see on the screen in front of you, um, that there are, uh, you know, I. This is my own belief. This is um, what I have come to realize over a period of time, is that um, cost capacity building, collaborations, as I just mentioned, and climate-centric policies and cohesive outcomes is what we should collectively work for. So actually, these are six Cs. These are not actually five Cs. We need to work collectively towards that. And what do I mean by that? Just to unpack it a little, uh, on Cost issue, I feel we need to focus on climate-proof and hazard-proof infrastructure. Now, that's not going to come cheap, right? And in government, we are always struggling to uh, make sure that we are able to fund everything that needs to be funded. So um, a better understanding of how your immediate vulnerability or your risk that you face can be tackled through building more resilient uh, infrastructure, especially public infrastructure, is where the cost factor comes in. Then we also have to have high investment in both planning, design, and construction. That's part of the cost factor. So just so you know, um, you know, whenever we go to the cabinet, um, which is the highest decision-making body in uh, the state government, as well as at the, at the central level, uh, there is a, a particular uh, pro forma that needs to be filled in in case uh, it's a project on building infrastructure where we, uh, the concerned department which is moving that proposal is supposed to indicate what is the climate, uh, you know, vulnerability of that particular uh, project and what needs to be done uh, to overcome that. So it's very much already an institutional approach, but um, the more you build these infrastructure, the higher is the cost is the point I'm trying to make. And um, we also need to switch to environment-friendly raw materials, and this is where a lot of you in the industry as well as institutions like IITB come into the picture because that's where uh, I think more uh, research needs to happen. You know, why is it that every year we see potholes on Mumbai roads? Yeah, people lose lives over it. Can we make better roads? Then um, coming to capacity, focus on training, um, very, very important task force, um, you know, training of administrators and policy makers because the basic entry level uh, in the government is a graduate, okay? So we hire people on a regular basis. Uh, the minimum qualification is a graduate. Now for them to comprehend as they go along, and there is intensive training. It's not like they are not trained and they're just put on the job. It's not like that. But the training is more in government systems and processes. So they don't have a very sort of you know, strong grounding in um, uh, science always. And that's where um, you need to bring in partners who can work along with the government force to make better plans and policies. And of course, use of advanced tools for climate change prediction and analysis. This is something, again, I, I really believe in. And I have uh, myself been involved in a project where we worked on a climate e-tool by layering climate uh, data with health data to see if there could be a machine learning approach to predicting where likelihood of these kind of you know, events is going to be. And so prepare for that, so sort of pre-position for that. Collaboration, can't emphasize this enough. 
Um, and um, I would also like to say that in the United Kingdom, just right behind 10 Downing Street, there is a, a building in which academia, scientists and researchers, uh, people from various universities work along with key departments like energy, environment, industry, public health to advise ministers on what kind of policies need to come out. That kind of sort of, uh, you know, approach to our own um, uh, governance is also very much the need of the hour. So real-time flood mapping. And uh, you would have seen some pictures yesterday in the news when uh, Honorable Chief Minister visited the control room in BMC. So the BMC does have a control room. Um, it is able to give you real-time information of where uh, the water levels are rising and that's how um, the ward office uh, level then tries to uh, put into place, you know, response mechanisms. But, you know, you're all welcome to um, sort of uh, tell us what more could be done with these kind of control rooms and definitely we need more of them. So there is only one in BMC in, in the state. All municipal corporations do not have these kind of very elaborate control rooms. Um, Climate-centric policies, of course, uh, we need to focus on climate governance, climate equity, and operational sustainability. These are big words, but when you actually try to understand what exactly is meant by that, is that anything that you're doing, you need to look at what's the climate risk and, um, you know, work towards making it more um, uh, sustainable uh, in the terms of having development, but also ensuring that it is uh, protective. And a granular assessment of disasters and development action plans at local level. So every state, every city, every district has its own disaster management plan. Those are revised every time there is a major event in the state. Uh, but then also at the district level and at the city level, uh, the officers who are tasked with this kind of work need to be supported through more science and more research. And maybe more fellows who will work with them on, um, you know, how to decongest traffic, how to... Um, uh, prepare for um, more sort of one-way system so that th you can avoid congestion, how to build better roads. And uh, uh, lastly, of course, cohesive uh, outcomes, implementation of environment-friendly culture, you have to build a culture of it. And a sustainable and healthy future can be achieved through reduction in disasters due to climate change and, of course, in increased use of renewable energy. Can we go to the next slide because that's really important. Um, so I would like to just mention here I can't see without my specs, thank you. So technology-led solutions for climate change risk management mitigation, I would just like to draw attention to the fact that Government of India is developing uh, these kind of tools. It's not like nobody is doing anything. So state-of-the-art flood warning systems have been prepared and there is also a real-time flood mapping system. So do not, basically what I'm trying to say is do not in reinvest or invest in things which are already being done. Keep yourself informed and aware of where, where initiatives are being made and you sort of sus support that activity rather than trying to do it afresh. So don't spend money doing the same thing all over again when already the Ministry of Earth Sciences has actually given us these kind of predictability models. Rather, please study them and suggest improvements if possible. So uh, my first slide I, I could not explain, but I'm sure you're all aware of the you know uh, hazard vulnerability of... Uh, so, um, there was a report by the Council for Energy, Environment and uh, Water in 2020. The latest report is underway. It has not yet been published. There's a, a report being prepared in 2022 as well, which gives you the picture. It's pretty scary, actually. And uh, urgent action definitely is needed in this sector. Um, and it's not something that will go away in a couple of days. It might stay with us for the rest of our lives. And so I will end with this. In case there are any fence sitters who still feel that climate change is not something that happens, then your attention is drawn to this. Thank you. Uh.